This thing is weird. Anyway, hello everybody! Mm. I'm sorry for the de delayed reaction recent, uh, delayed opening recently. It's just the fact that Bandicam has fixed a bug, uh, with the audio bug, as you can probably tell from the last episode. However, it still takes a heck of a long time to actually boot up. Now, I don't know if that's because I have something running, something processing in the background, or if it's a RAM issue, I don't know, but I have to... Oh my god, the actual recording is a little bit laggy. Bam bam. Alright, so, um... So I just need to keep checking to make sure it's actually working. Um, probably didn't need an explanation, probably didn't need to know that, but in case those of you who are curious, there you go. With that, hello everybody, this is BeastCat100, and welcome back to some more Miles Edge with History Investigations Turnabout Blaze. In the previous episode, we had talked to Gumshoe and uh, Ambassador Polano, finding out that the two halves of the building uh, are symmetrical, which means that uh, even the fireplaces are symmetrical. And we also found that the ashes are missing from the fireplace. What does that mean? Well, it's pretty simple, but if you like what you see, leave a like down below, comment if you have anything to say, subscribe to me if you haven't already, and share with your friends so they can enjoy, join in on this investigation as well. Now, first thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to put up logic. Oh, excuse me. And I didn't, and I don't mean boot up Logic the music software, boot up Logic, Logic, Logic. So, missing ashes. Where did they go? Revolving fireplace used. Connection. <gasps> oh my god! Who knew? The reason as to where the missing ashes are. The reason as to why the missing at the at the reason. Whoa, it's worth drinking a little bit. Apparently, he's been drinking between episodes. The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is. Too clean for that. Ambassador Polenov said that he spilled some Babylese ink while he was burning the fires. And yet there is not a trace of the spill ink on the back of the wall anywhere. Well then, I don't know what happens. Well, I'll tell you what happens. The two sides were switched. By using the revolving fireplace wall, the ashes were moved into the neighboring room. Which means that this is a clear indication that the fireplace was used. Then you mean, the person I was chasing disappeared from this room through there? Yes, I believe the person you were in pursuit of is Mr. Cochin's killer. And after committing the murder, escape through the fireplace. Alright, that adds more to logic, and we have some more logic points. However, I'm sure Edgeworth has something else to say. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, you figured out the killer's escape route. I have, but this is only the beginning. Now we have to chase the killer down. Let's do a little bit of save statement. Escape through the revolving fireplace and Sheena's location. If the killer used a fireplace in this room to escape into the next, then it's only logical for us to talk with the person who was in the neighboring room. The 
person that was in the next room was... Oh! It was that person, sir! Yes, Detective. Agent Sheena. Alright, Kay is going to go and... Undo Little Thief. Investigation complete. Alright, now we are getting into the brunt of things. I know this is a this is a very long case, but it's only fitting since is this is the final case of the game. Of this game. There is a sequel. There is a sequel. We will be getting to that after we are done with this case, but for now, let's just keep going. It's looking more and more like Miss Sheena is the killer, isn't it? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. We need to go through what we know so far. She came running straight into this room from the next one, and instantly accused you. Furthermore, she claimed that it could only have been you that killed Mr. Cochin. I don't have any proof yet, however, I know she, she is hiding something from us. Okay then, why don't we go ask Miss Sheena herself? Hold it! No, not yet. There's something that needs to be done first. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, is it my turn to do something, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes. I have a two-part special assignment for you. First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on Damask 2's note. Okay, I get to the lab boys right on. Uh, I get the lab boys on that right away. Second, I want you to see if you can fit through the revolving fireplace wall. Right now, sir? No, next decade. Of course now! We need to test our hypothesis first, don't we? Go on, Gummy. You can do it. Are you saying that she not as fat? Alright, I'm gonna do this like a real man. Here I go. Through the fireplace and back. She didn't need to psych herself up that much for such a simple task, Detective. Yeah, Detective Gumshoe! Wow, the wall inside the fireplace really did turn! That's so neat, now we want to try going through there, too. There really is a secret passageway through there. I had no idea. Would appear the ash was really pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the Babylon's ink you spilled, Ambassador, is on the back wall. Okay, here I go, sir! Hold it! Take if I like to go through there under the same conditions as the killer. Huh? But all that ash and stuff! And your point is? Now, we're really short on time, so if you could please hurry on through. Uh. Yes, sir. Okay, so now we pretty much have the whole picture, right? No, not yet. There remains a few unsolved more mysteries to solve. Such as the Yacht Grosso's whereabouts. The other smuggling ring members. The two weapons that made it across the border. The key misused still seven years ago. In fact, we haven't figured out a thing regarding how Miss Yu is related to the embassies. Mr. Edgeworth, a number of pieces connect in a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make one complete ment mental ex one completely mentally exhausted. Sorry. What are you saying, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought you were the one that said it's easy to f if you follow the leads. Hmm. Was that supposed to be an impression of me, Kay? Oh, was it? If it's info you need, need Gummy and I can help with that. Then all you have to do is show off your fancy schmancy logic logical conduct. Yeah. D d Ooh. Apparently, Kay's been drinking too. Show off. Does it seem like I'm boastful when I do that? Let's not overcomplicate matters, but okay, Mr. Edgeworth. We've been so focused, like a laser, on only what seems strange and out of place. It's no wonder nothing clicked and we haven't unlocked anything yet. 
Well, if we think things through calmly, the answer should come to us. Okay. That's sort of... That's the sort of... Yeah, it's... Uh, vodka or whiskey? Um... Apparently that's going to be the theme of this episode. Um, <clears throat> That's the th sort of thing I say to myself. When I'm practicing how to unlock padlocks, you know? That is something that I hope that I hope practice doesn't make perfect for your sake. <laughs> Yay! Looks like you looks like you're back to your straight lace self again. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, the back, sir. Yes, I can see that. Good work, detective. Looks like you can use a fireplace like a door, sir. Are you alright, Gummy? I I'm okay. Just a bit of ash and dust, that's all. Jacques has gotten quite filthy. You can see the hem has practically turned black. Wow. That would be great if they could show that in the actual avatars, but whatever. Yeah, well, quite a bit of the unburnt ink got on it, sir. Hmm. I see. Thank you, Detective. You did a fine job. I'll even pay the cleaning bill for the transcript. What? Oh, no, sir. I could never. This is just my old coat, sir. If it's got to actually get about, then I get it clean, but, you know. I see. Very well then, as we wish. So because Gummy was able to climb through the fireplace, we know it can be used, right? Yes, but that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important fact. That the ink was unburnt, which means... Whoever escaped through that fireplace... Would still have traces of um, ink on them. And that is... I will have to explain it to you later. Right now, we need to deal with the handwriting analysis. Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir! I'll be back before you know it! The handwriting analysis on Mr. Cochin's handwriting will take a bit of time. Let us go and wait in the theater Neutralis, along with Agent Lang and Agent Shi Na. Aha! Alright, Jesus. Whew. Uh, where are we time-wise? Uh, I guess we can go on a little bit more. I'd say this is going to be about 20 parts. Um, maybe a little bit more by the time this is done. But, you know, I'm not going to do a two-hour long finale like I did for one of the other things. Because I did not know it would go on for that long. Well, it was two hours? I think it was more, actually. But, you know, I kind of just got on a roll and then decided to... Oh! Anyway, that's in the past now. March 14th, 11.33pm. The Atrium New Town... Yeah. Apparently, I've been drinking. Everybody's been drinking between episodes. Um, the Atrium New Charles Lobby. Ages Lang. Lang says, Little cubs, they ne never do they know the real fury of elder wolves. These quotes are definitely becoming increasingly dis dis da, 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 da. difficult to decipher. And what does that mean? It means you'll never really know how angry I can get. Mr. Prosecutor. Count for bills made with babbly zinc. They were all of Zang Fod denominations. Yes, yeah, so we heard from Miss Von Connor. But, but we don't know where the money. The plain money has gone. Miss will not have figured out it was all burned yet. Ever since those things showed up in circulation. 
My country's economy has taken a big hit. Zhang Fa is in financial chaos as we speak. Just can't tell the difference between our own bills and the fakes. But it's not just the money. The citizens are also worried. Seek the honor of the House of Lang on this. And I've come to this land to capture the mastermind behind this whole mess. I investigated how the bills were made and how ink was smuggled into into Zhang Fa. And I pursued the smuggling ring all the way here. I need to turn off the notifications for this post. Wait, does it say turn on or turn off? Turn off. Yes. Alright. But tonight, this is where the final chapter was written. Despite my frantic efforts to chase the smuggler down, someone got him, got to him first. Now I'm called to return home without a single answer. It just lay. I... Don't stop. It's not your fault. Not anyone's fault, Mr. Prosecutor. Oh, looks like the big old wolf has a soft heart. Mr. Elba, I'm sorry for all the trouble tonight. Oh, no, no, this is not too hard. It is I who should apologize. It was all because I was not strong enough. If only I was able to think of a, a better solution. I understand this is the voice I gave him at first, but... It's that time gap. I kind of just start to forget voices. Um, one of the times when I had Victoria on to record with me, she actually had to remind me of a couple of the voices that I did because I just completely forgot them. Kirk, you fool! Curse your empty brain! Hey, being a little hot on yourself, ambassador. Take full responsibility. But tonight, end of story. She now, let's go. Time to return to our den. Yes. I would like to admit it, but there's not much else to, to do but to go home as well. Agent Lang, if a moment, if you please. Hold it! You Wolfman is security lady! Hold it! Objection, pal! Detective Gumshoe! Have you got the results of the handwriting analysis? Already? Yep, and that note was definitely written by Mr. Cochin, sir! Hmm. <clears throat> Just as I thought. Good work, detective. Okay, so we have the handwriting analysis. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. How long do you intend to hold us up for? Hmm. Sorry to have made you wait, but I believe that now everyone is finally here. Agent Sheena, I'd like to ask you something if you don't mind. Yes? How exactly did you fail to see the Yotogorosu? When you were in the neighboring room to where Mr. Kochim was killed. I'd like to... I'd like you to explain that to us. What? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. What are you doing asking her about something she didn't see? Agent Lang hasn't touched the Babel investigations hall. So I suppose I will need to explain a few things to him. Myers Edgeworth. I can't even begin to imagine what's going on in that head of yours. The only thing going on in my head is the pursuit of the truth. Or, oh, it sounds like you have some sort of plan. Very well, I'll supervise you until the end. <sighs> is she seriously going to treat me as a subordinate for the rest of the day? You're not trying to pick a fight with my subordinate on some flimsy guess, are you? 
I'm not trying to pick a fight, and the evidence is hardly flimsy, as you will see. Yeah, double glasses. Ha! <laughs> I should have known. You and I are destined to fight it out to the very end. It will appear that way. Double point! Well, I'll prove her innocence, so let's see what you've got, Prosecutor Azurth. <laughs> With pleasure. From the opening arguments, I'll discuss the Yotogrosu that appeared in Babylon. And establish exactly who it was that Case saw. Agent Lang, I assume you've been briefed on Kay's testimony. You mean the suspicious person in the coat that she that she saw? That's right. That person is one of the keys to solving this case. The person who pretended to be the Yota Grosu. Pretended? What do you mean by that? I'll get to that in a second, but first I want to review what the, what this person's case all did. Okay, if you could please explain what person you were chasing for did for us. Okay, you you got it. I first spotted the suspicious person near an open near the open air stage on the Babley side. I called out to the person, but as soon as I did, that person ran off. I thought it was rather suspicious, so imme I immediately gave good chase. That's a really good picture of her. <laughs> so for the sake of argument, let's call this suspicious person the Yacht Grosso. Now please what happened when you chased the Yacht Grosso up to the third floor. Can do! I chased the Yacht Grosso all the way up to the third floor of the Babylonese Embassy. It was a pretty straight chase down the hallway until until the sudden turn. The Yadagrasu disappeared around the corner, so I did my best to catch up. When I turned the corner, I saw the Yadagrasu run into Mr. Cochin's office. I gave chase and ran into the room. But when I entered the room, it was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground next to my foot. So I turned on the light, but then... And here is where Kay screams. Uh, yeah, whatever. Who's there? By the time I had turned on the light, Stilliotic Rasu had disappeared. When Kay entered the room, the person she was chasing was already gone. Why do you suppose it was, Agent Lane? What do you mean, why do, I, why do you suppose? Isn't it obvious? Present slipped out of the door behind the girl under the cover of darkness. Objection! Objection! Sorry, but I know for a fact that person didn't escape through that door. Oh? How do you know that with such certainty? Huh. <laughs> That's easy. If the autocross who had left through that door, they would have run right into this person. Sheena. Take that! Your answer is Sheena. Yes, because let's consider what we what would have happened if the Yacht Rosso had used the door. When Kay screamed upon Mr. Discovery Mr. Coach's body, the Yacht Rosso would have run right into Agent Sheena, who is in the next room. Um, there's a bit of a contradiction there. If you if you look at the map closely, the Yadagarasu actually sh could have ran into the uh, ran 
the other direction towards the elevator, taking the elevator out, and then escape that way. Ugh. Unless... Well, let's see. Yeah, I mean, there would have been time, because... It, according to Lang's test... Or Lang's... Situation. Slipped out under the cover of darkness, which means it was still dark when the Yadagrasu entered, uh, exited the door. There would have been more than enough time between the light switch to scream and Shina exiting the room for him, for the Yadagrasu to turn the corner. Uh. Unless it happened just like that. Agent Shina, would you mind t telling us if you saw this specific person in question? No, I didn't. I didn't see anyone. You sure? You see? Therefore, the Yotagrasu could not have escaped through the door. Not so fast! It just means that creep slipped out before Shina made it into the hallway. That's exactly what I was saying. OBJECTION! Huh. I doubt that, as there was another person in that hallway. A certain detective- Oh right! Gumshoe! Detective Gumshoe, where were you exactly at that time? Misa? Well, when I heard Kay scream. Ah, okay, that fills in the gap. I ran towards Mr. Coach's office from the opposite direction, Agent Shina, sir. Of Agent Shina. So, Agent Thing, can you explain how someone could have eluded both of them? Even you must concede that under these circumstances, the door was not a viable route. Gah! Gah! Way to go, Mr. Edrith! You nailed him with just an explanation of what happens! Yes. I've eliminated one of the possi possible escape routes from that room. But this is far from over. I need to make Agent Lang aware as well. And yet another possible escape route for the Yotagorosu could have taken. So that's what you were trying to show me. You Mr. Prosecutor. Let me guess. This is what you're trying to say, right? Because the door was not a viable escape route. Then there must have been another way. Out. Oh, well, no shit. <laughs> Precisely. That's kind of a give and take there, Agent Lang. You're not really as smart as you look, are you? Ooh, this episode's getting long. I think we're gonna end it off here. However, I don't usually do this because I actually need to start recording Fire Emblem for the weekend. However, since I'm on a roll, I think I'm gonna keep going. However, you guys are gonna have to wait until Tuesday to finish this off. If you're watching it as it comes out. If not, then, you know, enjoy the rest of the series, depending on how far you are, how far in the future you are watching this. Um... In the next episode of Miles of Truth Attorney Investigations, we are going to go and show Agent Lang the other possible escape route for the Yada, Yada Garasu. I will see you guys later.